And they're doing reverse mains. Let's get that. Let's get that through before anyone else starts talking. These are reverse mains. So the Yoshi yep. is going to be played by Faro, uh, and Hydra is going to be. Or, I got that backwards. See, this yep. is what reverse mains does to you. <laughs> yeah, reverse mains and reverse individuals. Now it's the it's the Hydra Yoshi and the Faro Palu, because because <laughs> because because I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> These two have known each other for a good long while, and honestly, both characters are rather straightforward. What you just need to figure out as Hydra is like the intricacies of Yoshi's double jump in terms of, and breaking some muscle memory from that front. Uh, but aside from that, both of these two have spent so much time playing the game that adapting to different characters is not a problem, as we've seen in a very even game to start off. Yeah, both players keeping it tight and close. That shows just their experience um, as players, not just with characters. You can see as well Hydra opting for some of those empty short hops as well. Just very nice to see some common tactics that you see from Yoshi players being played by somebody who doesn't usually play the character. I just a grinder after all. He's got all of that online experience and coaching experience as well, typically seen as the, the mentor for all the uh, NJCU players on top of their coach. So it's, it's a very healthy kind of approach to uh, approach the team. Oh, what a drop through back air there from Farrow, from Farrow though, to take the first stock of this group up. Yeah, very nice catch. Keeping it close throughout, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the fire back from Hydra pretty quickly. Already though, I mean, we can see both players kind of took that first stock to get used to this new play style and maybe need a little bit more time to get used to it as that up B not quite gonna reach the ledge there. Yeah, some intricate angles and some little intricacies of what makes each character broken might be lost thanks to the reverse mains, but I mean, we're seeing a pretty good one thus far, trying to go for the egg setup with the soft toss. Hydra getting a little bit too greedy with some of these block strings, yet Pharaoh's not really taking his turn back, instead just letting Hydra press all of these buttons and is at the victim of all of the damage that Yoshi can put out. Yeah, finally breaking through with that forward air and dash attack, getting enough space to play around. Trying to go for some pivot grabs here, maybe bait Hydra into the corner and get something out of that, but not going to find anything. The forward smash ducking under the shield and you're not going to get blocked with that. The egg toss, we're going back and forth. Look how much space Hydra is just dominating like so much airspeed being utilized to the point where Pharaoh is put into so much pressure holding shield in the corner diing in on a Yoshi down throw you've got to know better than that that is terrifying to do possibly doing it because of the knowledge of the character right if you know something's the optimal way to not do it sometimes that's the mix-up is do it the wrong way because they won't be expecting it yeah fair point just trying to find a, <laughs> trying to take advantage of too much knowledge on the part of either side here. Oh, the reverse half bear barely whiffing thanks to the spot dodge. Para, fa, excuse me, Hydra looking for this stock any way, shape, or form. Uh, the the tag on Pharaoh first, I think, is perhaps what we are right now. Is this is reverse mains, so we are cursed to keep getting names absolutely wrong. But hold on, Hydra trying to do something here and just barely going to get slipped by by Pharaoh. Part of me is wondering if this was a smart deal to take and, and who offered it or if it was mutual. <laughs> that is that is an interesting question. Did someone pose this and were they doing so intentionally? They were like, yeah, I'm better with this. I can get the better opening. I can get the better lead for my team. That would be a fun way of doing it. Shut down one of the stronger players on the other team. I mean, both of these two are kind of the peaks of performance on their respective squads. Hydra, a former member of the New Jersey PR, uh, when he was at his most active. Faro, currently a major level threat uh, with intense, intense placements. The back throw will take the stock there on the part of Faro, bringing us to an even game. And one there was landed. Big setup here for a clean 44%. This game is not over, Weimer. No, not at all. And they are fighting it out. Faro trying to get uh, we, uh, heels back on the ground and is able to do so. Now kind of has Hydra in a little bit of an awkward position using that platform as an umbrella, but Hydra only needs to break through one time and the spike gonna send you all the way up and bring you right back down. Such a 
devastatingly powerful spike to be <laughs> to chase so far vertically and then follow up any sort of drift or air dodge with a massive finisher. That's Hydra taking the first game of this crew battle one to nil and we'll have a single stock going into the next player of Rutgers A who that that is a team that has very, very few weaknesses. Pharaoh is certainly in the upper tier and the best player on that team, but the skill floor is not far behind. Yeah, I mean, they were the dominant team I alluded to earlier. Nimbus and Cheese being the two players that put in insane amount of work. I think both of them got um, five stocks each, uh, possibly more. I could be misremembering, but they, they went on a crazy, crazy run in their first match of the day. And anyone up there, Cub, I think was the only other player besides Pharaoh, didn't see play in that first set. A very strong player in his own right, uh, leader of the MBS crew, or one of the leaders of the MBS crew. Uh, been switching mains and uh, characters a lot lately though, as they are now on the Corrin, uh, switching from Originally, it was Sora, then to then to Cloud, and now onto the Corrin. Sword fighters throughout, so you know that sword is going to be consistent regardless of what character they're on. Oh, for sure. And and Corrin's actually a lot more similar to like a fusion of Sora and Cloud than you think. A really, really strong and accessible back air for spacing and closing out stocks on top of the. Uh, acquiring Sora's large sweeping up air with no sour spot, you can really take advantage of all of the strengths of both characters in one. Yeah, and you can see that coming out a little bit, getting some good hits in with an air, looking for a constant chase every time, not quite finding it, but always getting pressure after the fact. You can't drop a stock here if you're Cub. Like, letting Hydra snowball on his not character. Like, Hydra's uh, declared characters are Palutena and Krom. If you drop a stock on against this Yoshi, it, it is, it'll be tough in order to gain that deficit back. But a new great overshoot back in there to put Hydra in such a commanding position. No jump onto this Corrin, and no stock either. Yeah, the stock unfortunately is going to fall. Only needed one more good hit to take Hydra out. It looks like it's what we're going to be looking for. I'd be surprised if we lose another stock here. That would be some insane play by Hydra. Cub on the precipice of closing this out for good. Try to go for the instant pin to, to reverse the stock. Man, it has just been call out after call out from Hydra. And then he SDs. <laughs> <laughs> Dude plays sure. so well and then kills himself. Got too lost in the sauce and sauced his way over to the blast zone. Oh boy. <laughs> like, I think we'll see it in this uh, in this clip. Like, the, a multitude of overshoots to take advantage of Cub trying to overspace and play overtly safe in those type of positions. Like, another just high forward are calling out the jump to the platform and, and then just drifts too far. <laughs> Where Bro. are you going? <laughs> what was the neutral before? That tongue doesn't grab the ledge. What was you he just, cooking? You could just hear the cartoon slip sound effect as the Yoshi just propelled just by the ledge. Oh. A literal, literal Wily Coyote moment. Like, oh, there's yeah. no floor there. <laughs> what do you oh, I, I mean, Cub escapes with only <laughs> dropping one stock. Uh, gets a chance to come up against the next player from NJCU. Uh, all of which Corns can stack up pretty well into. I mean, you've got killers like Smash Bros and Maximus on their Lucas and Rob, respectively. Uh, Kashira playing an Aegis Joker duo. Uh, looks like it is going to be Kashira on that uh, presumably Joker, but might see Aegis as well. Yeah, uh, we've had another Aegis Wolf player earlier today, and it could be either or. That Aegis did do work earlier. Not necessarily the same player, but could see the same kind of character run through. I think both are good options into this Corrin, um, and can both play very well into the blind of who comes up next. Okay, either way, you have to take advantage of Corrin's more weaker positions, which are those offstage uh, spots. 
which Joker I think does a ton better. However, as Aegis, you can kind of play a a stat check type of game. Like Corrin's one of those characters that's a seven out of ten or an eight out of ten in just about everything on stage. Meanwhile, Pyra and Mithra, you can kind of consider them a in similar facets, but with nines instead of eights in some categories. So yeah, play, it, playing a strong offstage game is gonna be the key here to getting Cub out quickly. It's very much that um, rather than being a consistent nine, or sorry, rather a seven to eight, as you put it, it's more so that each character has consistent nines and tens, but also some fives and some fours here and there. It just depends on which form you're in. For sure. Some good sweep at the start, taking advantage of Mithra's blazing speed. Ooh, I <laughs> air dodging off stage and then burning the jump so quickly. Are you, you're just gone. You're just gone just like wow. that. Wow. So uh, about those fives and fours. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's one of them. Recovery is not great for either character. Uh, Mithra is usually your recovery specialist, as some would put it. But even saying specialist is kind of overselling how good a recovery Mithra is. And if you find a good interaction like Cub was able to, you can end a stock like that on the character. I'm really not sure about some of these like, directional air dodges off stage and then the reversals being spammed here from Kashira, just trying to find a big hit to close out a stock or gain some form of form of momentum. I can understand yeah, the idea. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, you feel free. Uh, I mean, Kashira's going to do it for us, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> when, when you can't decide who goes, uh, let the player choose. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is I wasn't sure about how much Kashira is sticking to Ira in this duo here, that maybe swapping to Mithra a little bit more, trying to get these quicker uh, combo hits in would maybe be the playstyle to go for. Yeah, at these percentages, like, you typically think Pyra is the one to go for, but at 130, 140, like, even Mithra will start having kill options sooner rather than later, and it's always more worth it to play neutral with the blazing speed of Mithra rather than Pyra. Yeah, and you can feel some of the sluggishness on this Pyra. The big hits that land, they're doing work, but they're not closing out the stock, and they're not coming often enough. As I say that, of course, commentator's curse, the up tilt will catch, but you're on 89% on your last stock with what should have been a relatively easy two Ooh. stocks to deal with. Yo, no way. Oh, no way. D no way there's a third. Okay. Okay. Do <laughs> a little a little lost in the stocks there, but hey, double footstool netting 61, and then the up B out of shield, that prominence revolt taking you to 84. Suddenly, Weimar, we've got an even game out of nowhere. Yeah, if you know the tech and you're good enough at it, that'll even up the stocks perfectly just like that. Now has this percent lead, as a matter of fact. So pretty good at recovering from what was a bit of a shaky start for Kashira. Just needs one more, two more good hits to clear things out. And now we are seeing the Mithra come out a little bit more to try and guarantee these offstage positions. Oh, not taking the stock with the up tilt quite yet was really close. That should be a punish. No punish indeed. Wow. Cashier coming all the way back after such a strong opener on the final stock. That double footstool combo was nuts. And no text coming out from Cub either. Getting a little bit too spooked and a little bit too cautious late in that game. Dropping a stock after only taking two. Yeah, it this didn't go. It didn't go quite the way I think either player wanted. I think both player are walking away from that with a little bit of shaking their head to go on, well, this is what I could have done better, but you got to lock back in, especially if you're Kashira, where you are immediately going into your next match. You only have one stock to work with to try and get something done here. And now you got to wait to see who Rutgers is going to send in. It just reminds watching that back, it's like, oh man, we went like apply pressure, apply pressure, backer out of shield, like uh, pressing a lot of Pyra's uh, overarching buttons, which are not only big, but uh, stock taking in strength. Uh, and then just, you know, the reversal out of that situation, like it sometimes it works and sometimes it just keeps working, even when stock one was played so well by Cub. Either way, though, we're going to have Cheese come up for Rutgers A, rocking that DDD. Yeah, Cheese, uh, as I mentioned last time, one of the menaces of the previous set that we've seen on stream um, 
took out Diamond's Icy as well as the entirety of Yabi's Samus. Uh, some absolutely fantastic play from the DDD. And I'd be interested to see if we get a run back of it. And potentially this is the start of Rutgers having control over the stock count. Yeah, it's pivotal moments here in the third uh, leg of any crew battle. It'll kind of decide what players and what strategies are kind of left on the table. And if you have such an awkward character like DDD come up, especially a player like Cheese, who is willing and able to do uh, just about anything to win with the character, playing slow, playing uh, frustratingly passive in a lot of ways, you can really uh, catch people off guard. Yeah. Getting into it now, we can see uh, both players having their fun as the SDs must occur. Um, but here we go. Stocks are finally there. Three to one. Cheese getting ready. Kishira just staying stoic. Let's see who takes it. Oh, good start by Kashira though. Pushing DDD off of the stage immediately. An interesting prominence for, uh, excuse me, Blazing End. Yeah, Blazing End is a very interesting move in this matchup because DDD obviously has the reflector on the neutral beam hail. As soon as hitboxes start coming out for that move, uh, DDD is no longer able to reflect it, I believe, which means you have to catch it in the kind of early phase. And if you're doing that, then you're already kind of close to the Pyramithra, where it's a little bit of an interesting range to be throwing out that neutral beam. Yeah, it's... If it's such a weird spot in Pyra's Arsenal War, it can be so good and so bad at the same time. Nonetheless, oh, and there you have it. <laughs> yeah, as I called it out, there you go. Playing close to understanding Kashira's reliance on using that move for broader spacing, finds a, the air dodge and throw off of the up smash. Getting close here. Oh, you still have a jump, I believe. And choosing to go for the high side beat there from uh, Kashira. Taking a lot of risks to make sure you go. Holo. <laughs> you were talking about risk. I think we both saw what risk we thought was coming there. <laughs> and that risk would never work. You always die first as Pyro. <laughs> yes, no. But it would have been a risk. Oh. Would have been sick. Careful. Go, oh, just going through the get up attack. I think if you end up dying to that, you have to you have to lose stock just on principle of like, all right, that was too sick. But both players going to go down to the respective up tilts and cheese. Only losing one stock, that's about as much as you can hope for. Pretty look, looking all right going into this next game here. Yeah, Cashier being able to take uh, three stocks of his own, keeping things even after Hydra took an original four. And that's all you can ask as a leading team in a crew battle, like just to trade with every team. Take three stocks for your three. And Cashier, his muscle memory and just general awareness of gameplay was kind of built on trading and coverage as you can see with that stock taken there there's a simple back air on block understand that you're plus and then go for the up tilt to cover rolls in you have to disengage or else you're caught that can be what pyra is so good at understanding value trades and making sure that your hits kill first yeah 100 percent. and now we've got our next player running up for njcu getting ready for this next game here who we got uh, so this is either, because uh, we've seen Kashira, uh, and this is not Smash Bros. I believe this is purple. This is Maximus. This is Max oh. Okay, so this is Maximus's Rob then coming up against DDD's, uh, Cheese's DDD. And again, game plan straightforward. Take three stocks, like at for your three, which is two off of Cheese and then one off of the following player. And Rob has a lot of easy ways to do so and a lot of just good, solid, like fundamental coverage within his game plan that a more specialized and kind of focused character like DDD, who has a very specific win condition, uh, may fall behind very quickly. Yeah, we saw last time uh, Cheese was answered by uh, Yabi Samus. And that was a situation where you're like, oh, okay, well, it's Samus. That should easily dismantle the DDD. And somehow, Cheese ended up pulling that game out despite being down the stock at the start. So plenty of room here for Cheese to cause an upset in the matchup and get rid of Maximus's Rob cleanly without any hassle. Uh, but at the same time, obviously, as you mentioned, Rob, pretty good matchup into DDD here, especially because you kind of just get to circumvent the sort of ledge trapping that DDD's best at. 
Yeah, that, and I think that's where I can't really see a proper workaround for Cheese since Maximus can just decide to recover high at any moment and ignore where DDD typically wins most of his games, which is at ledge. Even against characters like Samus that are really good at getting off of ledge, DDD can pin you down and force you to engage in a, on a very weird axis. Yeah, you do have a little bit of options if the Rob does go high. That forward air can cap pretty well, as well as up air is a really good kill option, and Rob will have a harder time getting out of it due to that big body. But it's definitely not as good as the Gordo ledge traps that you get a lot of the time. Yeah, can be certainly tough, but we've seen, I've certainly seen Cheese take games in in ways that he certainly, certainly shouldn't have. Hello, sir, you need to drop that stock. <laughs> Wanted to get right into it. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too eager as they're kicking it off here. 98 minutes on the clock and instantaneously it is Maximus off to that Nair down tilt start. Yeah, if, if we go down to time, there's been a huge error and something has gone terribly wrong. <laughs> we are in New Jersey. Sometimes, <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. sometimes players, they're, they're willing to play the long game. <laughs> <laughs> Do not engage. But as you can see already, Cheese Doing really good in a lot of these neutral interactions. Does have about a 45% lead at the moment and is trying to run further with it. Some Z catches, lots of these inhales. It seems like Maximus wants to scrap and wants to play the game where uh, Rob can just overwhelm you with his insane like nair into tilts. Wow, the catch there on the jump was so huge. Let's see if he's able to turn this into an edge guard here. Weimar, he is with that intense, intense down air. Seven frame active spike is all I need to say every time I see it. <laughs> yeah, it is a uh, beautiful spike. Ivysaur has a bit more notoriety for being one of the more insane spikes in the game, but Rob is not a slept on character, but possibly that spike gets a little bit slept on in conversations about best spikes in the game. It's just, you have so many other moves to worry about on Rob. Nair being immensely safe down to a frame three minus five, like, Forward tilt as well, another slept on move. Rob, just like the perfect generalist in this cast sometimes, can do it all and can do it all well. Yeah, but you can see Cheese as well, doing fantastic here, evening up the percents on this stock, going three for two, or yeah, three for three stocks on your three stocks. That would be what you want if you could get it. And is still maintaining a lead here, but the size of DDD will lead to some interesting looking hits like that, where the back air goes wide. <laughs> big opportunity here for NJCU just to extending their lead by one going into the final two players is nothing short of massive for a team as talented as Rutgers A. Yeah, Maximus teams, well. You gotta play slow here and you can see Cheese again constantly throwing out this inhale. Just be trying to catch uh, gyros and lasers with it, get that reflective property off. But you can see, actually able to cover the landing with the Gordo. Very nice use of the side there. I wonder if that jump air dodge was a little bit of a, a little bit of a mash, a little bit of a scramble, because it left Maximus with basically no resources going into Cheese's anti-air up tilt. But we won't have to worry about any sort of panic stocks being dropped from Maximus and his Rob as he takes the up smash on the neutral getup for the win bringing us yet again to an even trade-off, Weimer. Yeah, I mean, Cheese did about as good as you could hope for there. Got, excuse me, got Maximus down to that last stock, which is what you want to do when you have two stocks. And now it's the question of, do you send in Nibis, who tore apart the previous team, or do you send in Pataya, who has that Kazuya that we haven't really seen come out yet, but could do good into the Rob here. Both players are in, insanely strong. Like Nimbus is uh, one of the biggest hidden bosses in New Jersey, able to take wins uh, on players like Pattaya uh, in brackets. Uh, however, Pattaya himself, a former member of the NJPR yet again, but it looks like it will be Nimbus stepping up to the plate uh, with their Joy-Con Bowser Jr. Yeah, and as, as I've mentioned and alluded to multiple times, Nimbus, was a destroyer um, in the previous set we saw. And it would be very possible that the same thing happens here. Answered into multiple bad-looking matchups. 
with flawless execution that you can see getting warmed up, getting ready, possibly to just keep that momentum going into this next uh, crew battle here. Certainly a fast player as well on the part of Nimbus, but I, I feel like the, the game plan from NJCU is so easy at this point in the game for Maximus. Just needs to trade on one stock. And is it difficult from a practicality standpoint? Yes. Like taking any stock between all of these different evenly matched players is extremely hard. However, straightforward and easy to understand of a game plan can free you up mentally to have a fresh mental stack going into players because all you need to do is take one stock. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, love that play-by-play -play as well. And you know who's coming next as well. It's the coin flip between um, Purple's Pac-Man and Smash Bros' Lucas. Both kind of playing a little bit more of a ranged game. You know you're going to have that mid-zone to deal with. That might be why Kazuya was held back a little bit, just to let Nimbus do as much damage as possible, potentially get some momentum going into those two, um, and stop any crazy things from happening to give this Kazuya some extra breathing room into what can be slightly more difficult matchups. Yeah, I'd be surprised to see Smash Bros uh, come out before the anchor on the part of NJCU, like really forcing uh, the goal to really force out that nuclear bomb that is Kazuya in the back. Uh, is, is pretty potent to say the least on the part NJCU. Like, make sure that you're going into Kazuya with a stock up in the late game can be quite huge. Meanwhile, Rutgers A is playing to that strength as well. Trying to make sure that you have this stock taking machine that is Kazuya Mishima and that is uh, uh, Pattaya going into final games can be all the more stressful for the opponent. Yeah, and you can see as we're getting into it, I think every player is aware of what's at stake here. They're all kind of playing a little bit more slow and calculated. We're seeing both players happy to just sit back and let the other do their thing until they see the opening they want. Nimbus throwing out a couple cards here and there, but for the most part, just standing around waiting to see what Maximus is going to do first. Great delay on the recovery. You know Maximus looking for that quick stock to be taken. Oh, trying to chase. You get a punish here for sure. Just a simple dash attack into forward air on the part of Maximus playing very cautious when it comes to uh, any sort of hard commitments. Wants to make sure this stock gets taken quickly. But the roll well, read from Nimbus, suddenly it we've got, got taken deep. quickly. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that went quickly, but not the way that was necessarily wanted by Maximus. Six stocks to six stocks, evening it up for Nimbus really well played and that does make it a little bit scary now as this is truly anyone's game going into the last two players here yeah i think just that one stock one singular stock is it can't be understated how important that was for nimbus especially against a character like rob who has no shortage of stock taking options but nimbus able to clutch up even up the game and make us make us head into the final two legs of this race with no strings attached yeah this is truly the no holds barred that you get sometimes with these crew battles this is where you have to rely on who you've kept in the back pocket and it's going to be purple as you predicted coming up to answer nimbus leaving smash bros to be the anchor to match the time that'll be a fun match uh, Smash Bros. has been playing uh, Lights Out lately uh, from a like mass standpoint across Jersey. He's been playing so well, constantly a threat in, uh, in all of these different brackets to be uh, that he's been attending. So Purple, no joke of his own, but to, to have that player who's been on fire lately sitting in the back and then you have a Pac-Man ready to slow things down and change the pace of the game entirely. Like, it's it's a really good duo to go in, have just two polar opposite of characters, despite Lucas's ability to play from a range where Lucas really has a lot of strength is his frame data being so safe on block and setting up these 
really, really intense pressure situations where there's just nothing you can do. And then meanwhile, Pac-Man, he's playing the long range, ice you out type game. Yeah. And we're going to see a bit more of that game going into this battle here against Nimbus. You mentioned the long range, and that is something that we're going to be seeing even more of as the stage is swapped over to PS2. Uh, every fight, I believe, to this point has been held on Small Battlefield. No real alterations from that. But now we're going to get a new change of scenery. Uh, Hydra and Pharaoh was on PS2, but everything since then has been Small Battlefield. You're correct. My apologies. That's no problem. It's <laughs> very small change up, but for characters like Yoshi, who likes to expand the full screen, and Pac-Man, who likes to do the same, like these are quite the benefits for these two characters. Yet Nimbus, he's not going to have a hard time in uh, closing space. He's going to have a hard time taking stocks, theoretically, yet no trouble here thus far. I'm going to eat my words a little bit as Nimbus finds a huge edge guard to put Rutgers A up five stock or six stocks to five going into these final two players. Yeah, that is the second time that Nimbus has opened one of these sets with an incredible upbeat kill like that, making Bowser Jr. look like a much crazier character than I think most people give credit to. But we can see now Purple finding a little bit more footing and starting to break up this pattern. It might be too little too late, though, as you've already got 83% on the second stock. As I say it, though, there goes the forward smash to close out Nimbus's stock as well. Yeah, against a player who's hyper aggressive like Nimbus, constantly looking for deep edge guards and big openings with the uh, clown cart. Sometimes just having easy and access, easily accessible reversals is all you need, which Pac-Man can play out of shield very well with Nair, with down air, and with any bonus fruit since his item toss is frame three. Yeah. I mean, items are just really good to play around with. It's so versatile of a projectile, but you don't need versatility when you've got a really good up smash. And that is one thing that Bowser Jr. has been blessed with. We've been seeing a lot of these stocks taken that way. And Nimbus, once again, sitting on a pretty nice lead going into this last stock for Purple. Purple getting a little bit whelmed here. Let's see. <laughs> the Mecha Koopa cross stage. <laughs> you gotta love it. One of the weirdest projectiles in the game. It's so awkward to play uh, with and around, but being able to spawn an item is pretty strong in this game as we see a lot of characters do it and a lot of characters have success with it. Yeah, having item play as a con. Ooh, oh, late hit a bell, almost leading to something. They're trying to get a roll read, but not quite going to find this reset that you wanted there. Purple manages to get that grab somehow. Yeah, the Galaga, uh, the Galaga grab on the part of Pac-Man as uh, another belt uh, into Smash takes that stock for Purple. Uh, it's active for as long as uh, Pac-Man looks happy. As soon as he starts frowning, uh, that's when the grab is disactive. Is uh, I love that. I, I love that. That's the tell. Is yep. Pac-Man happy? <laughs> he gets a, he gets a big old smile. Pac-Man happy. <laughs> Even game going into the final stock here. <laughs> a, a massive one to say the least, in, but the percentage lead is the end stock lead on the part of Nimbus. Not even going to allow me to set the stage. Another one of those eject offstage stocks taken on the part of Nimbus, who has now taken uh, four stocks. Let's see if he can match and get one more on Smash Bros, who is coming up to play as the final rung for NJCU. Yeah, this is the same aggressive monster that we were kind of seeing before. Nimbus doing really good at just locking down space, making sure that Purple can't play the ranged game that you want to see Pac-Man play. And thus, there was only one to stand in the way, being Smash Bros' Lucas. And I'm curious to see how Nimbus is going to handle having this one stock into that Lucas, because it could be enough to set up Mataya to only have to deal with two. And being able to take two Pac-Man stocks effectively sub 100 with uh, both hits being around the 90 mark when the clown car actually exploded that's that's massive like you're not letting pac-man control the game yeah and that is what you have to do into a character like pac-man that wants to control the game wants to put up the hydrant as a wall that you have to deal with wants to throw all these crazy projectiles to get massive combos with Shell and uh the whooping galaga there's a lot of crazy things you can do with that character, and Nimbus just said no, shut it down, and took a lead that 
did not exist for Rutgers beforehand. Yeah, this is the first one stock lead. It's a slim lead, but it's it's a lead nonetheless. Now Rutgers A can play that trading game, uh, even if. Uh, as long as Nimbus is able to take one stock, you make it very straightforward for Pattaya to wrap things up. However, as mentioned before, Smash Bros. is has been on quite the tear, is a very, very premier player in Jersey as of late. Let's see what this final game and this final stock of Nimbus can put together. Yeah, here we go, going into it. Already, it's going to be First Blood going to Nimbus, getting the opening. Not quite going to find some follow-ups on it, but does have ledge pressure somehow still. Wasn't he playing Larry last game? He was. This is the first we've seen of the Iggy all day. Mm. This could be very telling for the future. <laughs> the, the difference of Larry versus Iggy, yeah. Hey, Larry Life is clinically insane, so... I think almost all the Koopalings are. Probably. <laughs> anyway, uh, the percents are a bit more even at this point. <laughs> oh, what a trap there with the PK freeze. It does a ton of, sh of damage onto the shield. Ooh, not getting the spike from that back of shield though, and Nimbus responding with so many of these nares. That's a stock taken as well, calling out the jump. Uh, presumably that was the uh, a double jump cancel uh, into the Zare as well from Smash Bros trying to apply pressure from a reversal position. Not gonna let him get anything set up there is Nimbus. Five stocks on the day for Nimbus trying to make this MVP uh, player of the of the crew battle all his. Let's see if he can take another one with something crazy here Weimer before Smash Bros is able to find that stock. Wow the reflect. <laughs> It's so rare that you get to see the Ford Smash Reflector come out for any reason. That was a fantastic use of it by Smash Bros. But yeah, Nimbus, absolutely gunning for that MVP position, has been carrying in both uh, crew battles we've seen thus far. And just holding on to 160 at this stock, he'll finally go down to that Ford tilt, but was angling to potentially take yet another stock on Smash Bros before going down. What solid play there from Nimbus, bringing Smash Bros down to two stocks. And this is the best kind of position you can be in in a crew battle. Up one stock, going into the final game, final two players. All there is for Pattaya to do is to take two stocks with Kazuya Mishima. Yeah, I mean, Kazuya is a very interesting character and we've seen the polarization with when Pattaya had to go up against Ice Climbers before and just wasn't able to do it. Now, I will grant, that's one of the worst matchups you can find yourself up against for Kazuya. The second hit of having a second climber around always makes things more difficult. But that's not to say that Lucas is necessarily going to be better. And we might be seeing a little bit more of the PK Fire sound effects that Wi-Fi players love falling asleep to every night. <laughs> I had... Smash Bros does have a Steve. He would love to go it here. Uh, however, that is not how crew battles work. Locked yes. into the... <laughs> yeah. I didn't Locked. hear the Lucas pick, so I was like, are you doing it? <laughs> it's like, that's illegal. You cannot do that. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Ref? Everyone has to declare character beforehand for every crew battle. All right, he's having fun. We're going out in a flashy man. Final game, right. final stock, final stocks here. Let's see what happens. Uh, instantly, get <laughs> you destroyed. <laughs> Knew it was coming like everyone else and just sent it back. Return to sender. Ooh, that was, I didn't know down tilt could loop that way. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, it functions a lot like Ness's down tilt, but with a little bit more of a delay, yet it has a chance to trip. The, the Luigi to Ness's Mario, I guess. But In wow, way, yeah. I mean, yeah, Pattaya confidently taking that uh, and already trying to run over the second stock here, too. Smash Bros needs to get something grounded quick because Pattaya is going to just take this without having to be in threat of losing a stock. Trying to loop one of these drag on nairs into a down tilt. At these percentages, you can do some crazy things, but the rage drive online here for... Uh, 
or Pattaya that is no longer Nimbus anymore. See how long it lasts. You got that 7% on it. Wow. Whoa. You I'm a little surprised, honestly. That usually kills. All right. This one. That one should do it, though. That one, that one will do it. Yeah. All right. Gate to hell. Senia straight up to the blast zone. Or is that? That was Heaven's Door. Yeah. So, I should know that. I, I play Tekken. Yeah. Gates of Hell is the 3-2-3. Three, three, uh, and yep. Heaven's Door is the down B or the rage strike. Yep. All right, well, I that is going same. to be... Yeah. Yes. And that's going to be Rutgers. <laughs> Rutgers is going to take it over <laughs> over NJCU. Uh, very well played until the end. Kept it tight. But then Nimbus and uh, Pattaya, who still had the name wrong until the very end, going to take it at the very end there. Very well done. Yeah, just a simple shake of the hand. Like a crazy, a crazy comeback on the part of Nimbus taking five stocks in that crew battle to completely flip the paradigm that was set up by Hydra in the beginning of the crew battle. Despite it being reverse mains, he played it very well against two very solid players and nothing more that you can wish for from any crew battle between two high level teams than a one to two stock finish, despite uh, Pattaya's very, very dominant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, 100%. But hey, why don't we talk about something else real quick? Collision 2024 is coming up. We got a bunch of big names for it. Zane, Spargo, Cody Schwab, MK Leo, Axe, Glutiny, Moki, Light, Kadoran, and that's just the top row. You can see more under there as well. That's gonna be here in two weeks time, March 15th through the 17th. You, I would say you could register now, but all passes have been sold out. So you can come spectate if you still want. We'll be in Persephone, New Jersey, hanging out. And Collision, just like this event you see before you, on top of many others in the New Jersey scene, is brought to you by the Collision Series team, the esports group engaging in creative gaming experience. You can support the team by subscribing and following on Twitch, with what you're watching right now, the Twitter, at Collision Smash, and Collision Series YouTube on YouTube for all of the VOD uploads of everything that is done by the Collision Series team. Yeah, and if you like watching things by Collision, how about Fusion? It's the weekly held in Broadway, New Jersey, every week on Mondays. They've got Ultimate. They got the doors opening at 6 p.m. They've got Redemption Buster Brackets on the side that always rotate out to something new. And it's an arcade. So if you want to just go play some old school arcade games, you can do that. As mentioned, that's every Monday here on Collision Series TV. And if you want the live updates, you can always follow the Twitter at Collision Smash. And nothing in Tri-State would ever be uh, the same without the Xeno Weeklies happening every single Wednesday. Brought to you by the best production team in Smash, House of 3000. Uh, you can follow their Twitch at twitch.tv slash House of 3000. And every single Wednesday, the bracket is available with updates for it on Twitter, which is at Devin3000, hashtag free house, and start.gg slash Xeno, happening 21 Ludlow Street, Chinatown, New York City. Yeah, all right. Well, with that, we've seen three college crew battles thus far, and we've got some more coming up. So stick around, we'll be heading to ads real quick, but don't worry, there's gonna be more, more matches after the break.